So here's our example problem. It's got a fairly complicated method of get, generating that initial condition with U of T's. And also with a switch. That's a quarter farad, and we want to get this V sub C. So on one hand, it's a little bit nicer than the problem that I asked last class because it's just asking for a V sub C, finding V sub C or I sub L is easier. On one hand, it's a little harder than, ask, than last class because it's got some fairly complicated uh, work to find that initial condition. So let's see. Is that, we have? is that resistor in parallel with the capacitor a one ohm resistor? Yeah, it is. Okay, just wanted to see everyone who's here. All right, so, so Dom, the very first step, just outlining our steps in general, first step is gonna be finding those initial conditions. And we've got an A and a B. Step A is gonna to be to draw it for time less than zero. And our goal is to find two things when we draw it for time less than zero. Don, what are those two things we want to find? I sub L and B sub C. That's right. No matter what we're asked to find, we're going to find those two. And later on, our second set is at zero plus. And um, Aiden, what are the two things we're going to find at zero plus? Did I say I, I didn't draw that very well? Let me try that again. I sub L and V sub C. And how about at T equals zero plus eight? And what are the two things we're going to find there? I don't actually know. Sir. Not sure. It's going to be whatever you're asked to find. I'm going to label it X and X prime. So for this particular problem, it just so happens that it's going to be V sub C and V sub C prime, since we're asked to find V sub C. And notice how different that is from first order circuits. In first order circuits, we would find, no matter what we're asked to find, we'd find our V sub C or our I sub L, and we continue that all the way through. So Aiden, you're not off the hook yet. Uh, you're going to help me draw this circuit for T less than zero. So for T less than zero, what does this input look like? Um, it will be just 12 volts. That's it. So your 12 U of T will go to way to zero and she'll end up having a 12 volt source and keep going. Got a five um, so ohm resistor. The five ohm resistor and the inductor will be a short. Good, because you're in GC steady state, time less than zero, nothing's happening. Tell me about um, that switch. And the switch will be closed, so yes. a short. Right. Um, the Capacitor will be an open because DC steady state and the resistor will stay. That's it. You got it. All right. Now, you know you need to find Isabel, but I don't have Isabel drawn in the original cir circuit. And so I'm going to draw Isabel. It doesn't really matter how I draw Isabel, but if I draw my Isabel, now I'm limited in how I draw the pluses and minus around the voltage of Isabel if I want to use my equation. Remember that, that, that the two, two equations is I sub C equals C dV dt and V sub L equals L I sub L, di, uh, derivative of I sub L. So for passive, the passive sign con convention, which works for capacitors, inductors, resistors, anything that's not a source, Philip, what's, where do I put the plus? on the left side of my arrow or on the right side? So, so the plus is gonna go on the right side or the, the left side and the negatives and you go on the right side. That's it, it always exits at lower pressure than it enters. So that's our V sub L. And then using that same process over here, it's gonna exit more negative than it enters. Whoops, and that's uh, my I sub C. Good. All right, now we can start answering the question. So we wanna find I sub L first, and we said that I sub L is 
there. Um, uh, Sabine, what's Isabel? I got one half amp. How'd you get one half amp? What law? I did a, uh, I did a voltage divider across the one ohm resistor to find the voltage at the VC node. Okay, that's a, that's a great idea. So, so tell me that you're going to solve for both parts. What was your equation for finding VC as a voltage uh, divider? Twelve times one over five plus one. That's it. One over five plus one. So that gave you two volts. Two volts. So there's definitely two volts here, and so VC is indeed two volts. Good. And then I use. I um, analyzed through Kierkegaard's voltage law on the left-hand side of the circuit to say that there's 10 volts going through the 5-ohm resistor. So you're confusing voltage and current there. Voltage never flows through. Right. Voltage exists across two points. It's the current that flows through. And that's not just a, a, a naming thing. It's, it's, it's fundamental to what it does. <clears throat> so what you said is how much... Are you talking about, firstly, are you, when you're talking about the 5 ohm, do you want to talk about the current through it or the voltage across it? Uh, the voltage across it. Since okay. I have the... So you want to find the voltage across it. And so how much more positive voltage is on the left than on the right? Um, 10. 10, that's right. And you, and you can do that by saying the, it's the only way that you can add minus 12 plus 10 plus 2 equals 0. Okay. And now let's answer my question, though. What is I sub L? So it would be uh, V over R, which is two amps. Yeah, good. V Not over one R. I, I switched my Ohm's law. <laughs> I okay. got it wrong. And that is a good, and that's a good approach. Um, anyone else see it from a different way? Uh, Sabine, that, you, you did it about optimally. Yeah. There, there is another way to find it, though. Anyone want to show me another way? Another way, which is no better and no worse, is to say the 12 ohms is going to be pushing current through a total of how much resistance? Can you see where that, that current, there's only one place for current to flow. It's through here. You can assume they're like in series, uh, or because they are in series. In they're in series. Yeah. So then you'll go ahead and just use Ohm's law. So know. another way is just to use Ohm's law is to say it's the 12 volts sees a total of six ohms so it's going to have two amps flowing. And then now that you know that there's two amps flowing, can you see that that two amps, that VC is equal to the same as the voltage across the one ohm, just like uh, Sabine said. So that gives us, by Ohm's law, two amps times one ohm equals two volts. So two different ways to find the same result. Let's, we've killed that. Let's, um, Let's find out what's going on at t equals zero plus. Uh, Jonathan, what do you think that the voltage source looks like at zero plus? Draw for me, tell me what the whole circuit looks like for t equals zero plus. Uh, so the first voltage source there should be 24. That's right, because for Z, t equals zero plus, this, this uh, U of t turns on, and so we've got a 24 volt source. You keep going and you have your five ohm resistor and then you have a two amp current source. That's it. So at t equals zero plus at that one fraction of an instant in time, the current through the inductor at zero plus has to be the same as the current through the inductor at zero minus, which you just figured out, which is going to be two amps. I'm going to go down to the capacitor and it's going to be a two volt source as well. That's right. Plus on the top or the bottom. Plus on the top. Plus on the top. So you already defined what these units were for pluses and minuses and directions of arrows up here. So you got to keep them in the same direction. Uh, and how about that switch? And the switch will be open. That's right. So we could, if we wanted to, draw that remaining section, but it doesn't really do anything. We're not interested in any of the voltages or currents across or through the one ohm. So to make our circuit a little bit simpler, we, we can not draw that because our goal is to find VC and VC prime. 
and our VC is that voltage and the VC prime is the other thing we need to find. So that's our I sub C. Um, so John, tell me what you know. We want to find VC. Can you tell me VC just by inspection? Are you still talking to me? I'm sorry, not Jonathan, but John. I, I don't know, sir. Well, here's our, take a look at where our VC is defined. Mm -hmm. And so we're asking for a VC across a two volt source. Isn't it just two volts? Just two volts. By, by definition of what that voltage source does, VC has to be equal to two volts. So that's the easy one. Now let's do the hard one, VC prime. How do you get yourself into the world of primes? There's two equations. So you need to use IC prime, or you just find IC, because um, IC equals e, um, VC prime. Yeah, that's the one in the upper upper right corner. I'm not done with, with, uh, with John yet, though. So it is true that we want to find VC prime, and the only place that we see it is in that top equation, which is so nice, right? Because in, in the past, that, that last problem we did, um, we were looking for, I think, and we were looking for some sort of prime value that didn't exist there. I think we were looking for a IC prime and it doesn't exist there. So we had to find the primes that we could find, but now we can find the prime that we want to find. And it's VC prime equals one over C times IC. And John, can you just fill in those values for me? What's one over C? Um, one over four, one over one fourth. Uh huh. So what is that? Simplified. Okay. Um, four. Great. Yeah, that's it. And I sub C. Two amps. Two amps, because we've got our two amp source. Um, we've got our two amp source here. And so that two amps has to go through everywhere. Is it plus or minus two amps? Minus. Are you asking me no, because no. I asked you, or are you sure? It, it should be minus, right? Because it's coming out of the, it's, it's going opposite of, of the way that the voltage things are going. No. So all that you care about to see if it's plus or minus is you look at this arrow mm -hmm. and you compare it to this arrow. Okay, so it's positive. And this arrow says we've definitely got two amps going in a clockwise fashion, and that's mm -hmm. the same that this arrow is pointing, so it's okay. got to be positive too. That's all you look for is the direction of the arrows. Just like if you had another circuit, just like in this circuit up here, we had the, the, uh, we had the plus up here, and that plus matched this. And regardless then of what direction current's flowing, since the pluses and the minuses match, we see VC equals plus two volts. So let's get back to our problem here. We say this is two volts. So this is going to be eight. And what's the units on it? John, just to finish up. Volts per second. Uh, volts, I didn't hear you. Per second. Per second, that's it. So it's increasing at, at a rate at that moment in time, at that fraction of a moment of eight volts per second. It does not mean that it's going to be eight volts in a second. It means that if it continued at that rate, it'll be eight volts in one second. And it will probably change. All right, so now we've got our entire set of initial conditions. Let's move on to our next step.